welcome to the 11th All Africa Business Leaders Awards right here in Sun City. Now, as you know, Tanya, we're here to celebrate African excellence, talent, and innovation. And we're here to celebrate African leaders that are printing a new future for African businesses. Absolutely, they've come from all over the African continent and throughout this highlight special we're going to show you who the nominees were and who the winners are that are shaping the Africa that we want to see. Why did you choose to invest in this year's All Africa Business Leadership Awards? No, thank you, Mbali. The awards have been going for many years now. These are literally the 11th ones, and they've been growing every year. Um, and our participation in it has been the appreciation about the fact that they not only bring business people together, they celebrate leadership in different sectors of the economy. And in an economy like ours, where there's a lot of solutions required, we need people in business to remember their leadership positions. So we think that it's a good thing to support. You know what, I mean as Choppies we believe in investing in African businesses. And when Gareth gave me a call and said, you know what, we have a category that we think you guys will be interested in, and we thought, yeah, let's jump in. The Best Innovator of the Year Award, which resonates with Choppies as a company and as a business. So that's why we chose to invest. And it's not the first time actually. This, we're doing this for the third time, if I'm correct. So we thought, you know what, let's do it again and give other businesses a chance to prosper. We want to celebrate excellence. And today is all about celebrating excellence on the continent. And we're proud to be associated with the people, men and women, that work so hard to make a difference in their field. Um, so the category that we are sponsoring is the CFO Award, um, which is basically speaks to our um, company, I would say. We're a wealth um, manager. So I come from Sassoon Wealth and we do believe in um, investing in business leaders because a lot of um, the investing that we do is into companies in the listed space for our private clients as well as the institutional space. So anything that speaks to advancing business leaders in Africa and making our leaders, our business leaders compete with global companies is a great idea for us. We, we think there's growth in that and that's why we chose to sponsor that award? Uh, this year is to promote the obviously leadership of, of African business across the continent. I think it's the, it's the final frontier. Uh, obviously Africa is on, on, on the map to grow quite rapidly compared to, to the rest of the world. So yeah, I think we're investing in, in this continent and uh, it's the way forward. Isaac, you have been nominated for the Young Business Leader of the Year. What does that mean for you? I mean, uh, from where I come from, no one has ever achieved what it is. So it's really groundbreaking and inspiring and hoping from where I'm from, a lot of people will follow. I mean, it's phenomenal. The work I do is uh, impact work in training young people to be software developers. And for that work to be recognized where it's not necessarily of immediate commercial value, but about a broader movement to drive South Africa into a space where it can create technology, 
is really exciting because it shows that this award is recognizing building for longevity and not just short-termism. Thank you very much for the nomination. Um, I'm so happy on behalf of my institution, Zenet Bank, to feature in this nomination. And I'm also um, happy on behalf of my team to also feature in this nomination. It means a lot for us um, in Nigeria. It means a lot for us in the Nigerian banking industry. It's very exciting. I think, you know, often as entrepreneurs and business people, you build and just take a step back and be recognized really humbling, especially on such a platform. And I mean, it looks very auspicious this evening and so really glad to be here. Eleven years ago, the All Africa Business Leaders Awards was founded by Dr. Rakesh Wahi after founding CNBC Africa in South Africa in 2007. Since 2012, the Ablers have grown in stature and scope. I'm going to touch on an important aspect of our future, and that is the role of technology. While we were all locked down at home and changing our consumption and working patterns, there were exceptional minds at work who have ensured that technology has now developed a life of its own. The quantum leap in technology and innovation in the last three years has been more impactful not only in the last decade, but I would say over the last century. This points to one thing, that artificial intelligence is now a force that cannot be stopped and in time will not be contained. Technology and innovation will therefore play a crucial role in shaping the future of Africa through unprecedented opportunities. Having been at the launch of CNBC Africa in 2007, it was fitting to have delivering the keynote address at the 11th Ablas, South Africa's Deputy President, the Honorable Paul Mashatile. We of the firm believe that investing in infrastructure is crucial to unlocking the potential for Africa to experience a growth at faster rates, but more importantly, to ensure inclusive diversification. Africa has a lot of natural resources, which is good news for building value chains. Agriculture and the extraction industries are important parts of these value chains at the national, regional, and also uh, worldwide levels. For example, the Democratic Republic of the Congo produces 58% of the world's cobalt which is used to make electronics. And here at home, South Africa produces 69.6% .6 of the world's platinum. So Africa is rich with resources. Uh, so we must not sit around and uh, uh, decry poverty. We must use what we have to grow this continent. Before moving on to the awards, it was time to look back at past ceremonies. The Diablo Awards were set up a decade ago to honor ordinary men and women who, despite all the challenges and disruption, have taken extraordinary decisions to lead their organizations to glory. Far more important is the contribution that institutions like uh, ABN and CNBC in particular, and this kind of evening, uh, makes to building, let's call it African coherence, African connectivity, and uh, an important work in progress, which is a common purpose, despite our diversity and difference in views about where we want to take this continent. Women of the Year is 
And the winner is... Company of the Year is... African of the Year is... Honestly, to be named African of the Year is humbling and inspiring for me at the same time. To be selected in particular to follow last year's recipient, President Paul Kagame, is indeed a great honor. Mm -hmm. I would like, therefore, to dedicate this recognition to the people of Africa who inspire me daily. What can I say but thank you all? I'm delighted, honored, and thrilled. I think that, that Forbes and, and Abla will do an incredible job of knitting Africa together. And I think that this is a perfect example of how we're going to get this continent to work together and collaborate. I exhort us to actively promote an Africa whose thinking leaders are nurtured by our wholesome constitutional principles and insatiable inquiry. For far too long, we have been emerging. We have been described as an emerging continent. It's about time that we took our position as a global leader, I thank you very much. Tonight, you have all arrived here from the far corners of the continent and the world, and you have arrived from different cultures and different contexts, but let tonight be one in which we synergize our energies and share a common vision broadly engaging to set the agenda and shape the leadership narrative. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. It's a huge achievement for us. Absolutely elated. I would like to characterize it as to what's possible. Right, without further delay, let's go straight into the awards for tonight, which would not have the same gravitas and quality of finalists without our dedicated panel of judges across the continent. It's really been a very exciting journey uh, to work with um, very experienced business leaders within the African context who have made a significant mark both in terms of how they have conducted themselves in business and also how they became part of the judging panel. It is really a privilege for me to have presided over such you know, a quality of leaders who came willingly, voluntarily uh, to participate in the judging panel to expose the in-depth talent that is endowed uh, with the African continent. In selecting these African champions, uh, we go through a very rigorous process. Uh, we look at the contribution of these companies or these leaders in the local economy, but regional economy as well. We look at the innovation, we even look at their financials, audit reports, to really be sure that the corporate governance, uh, ESG practices, all of that are taken into consideration when we select uh, the African champions. Over the years, 
our research methodologies have certainly improved and uh, the ways in which we collect and find the information that is necessary for the companies that we are identifying as best performers is checked and ensure that we are representing the best uh, of uh, the African continent. At the same time, we have also expanded uh, the coverage of the companies that we bring in to ensure that we are up to date in terms of the changing dynamics of the African continent. And I have to say over the years, this has been proved to be so. Judges did not have line of sight or visibility of each other's scorecard. And I think most importantly, from a governance perspective, where any one or more judge was conflicted, as was the case with myself in the category of Business Leader of the Year, where Stephen Saad was one of the finalists or one of the uh, nominees, in that instance, being true to the governance structure that we followed, I recused myself um, from adjudicating in that category in its entirety. There's a process involved from, uh, first of all, receiving the, the information, the applications, uh, the evidence per category, per applicant. So we first of all verify the information that we receive. Uh, we ensure that that information goes through to the judges. Um, we, uh, while the judges are uh, deliberating, we make sure we're in the room, um, ensuring that they're looking at the correct information, um, making sure that um, the information that they are looking at is information that they're considering. Um, and, and then ultimately, at the event, ensuring that whoever was nominated is the correct person that's on stage receiving the awards. Uh, as a female professional, um, I would be lying if I'm not, uh, you know, if, to say that I'm not particularly partial to any of the categories. I would like to see more women in those categories for one. Um, and secondly, uh, when it comes to the categories, uh, the innovative of the year category, I feel a lot of uh, women are very uh, creative and especially, you know, you see the uh, innovation can even be in the creative industry. Uh, innovation can be in the social entrepreneurship category. Um, so I would really like to see more women in the um, Innovator of the Year category and also the Philanthropist uh, of the Year category because I do believe that women, women sort of fulfill uh, the mandate of both profits and philanthropy extremely well. <laughs> We are so privileged to have been able to be the research partner for the Abler Awards. Researching leadership and finding the best leaders in Africa is critical to establish role models, to give inspiration and also to get best practice in front of people across the continent. We have such talent in Africa and we are continually trying to emulate the developed world as we call it. We really need to believe in our own leaders and this Abler Awards a process that has been repeating for several years has really highlighted exceptional leaders in Africa and we're so privileged to be part of it. And so the proceedings moved on to the awards in the first category of Young Business Leader of the Year. We as the Gauteng Growth and Development Agency are sponsoring the Young Business Leader Award um, in the different categories that we'll be seeing. And we're excited to be part of it, not only because Africa is a generally young continent, and if you want to recognize leaders and growth, you've got to focus into it, but also because we think that part of the solutions in resolving <clears throat> growth and many other issues in the continent are gonna come from young people. So for us, we're basically betting on the future. Young Business Leader of the Year. 
the Young Business Leader of the Year category honors young industry leaders that have transformed their business ventures and endeavors. They ultimately solidify themselves as icons and trendsetters in their organization's innovation, special advancements in technology, management, production, and operations. The nominees are Timothy Nui, co-founder and co-CEO of Finn, a company based in Mauritius. Isaac Mbata, CEO of Skytents from South Africa. Skytents has grown to become a leader in the manufacture, sale and supply of state-of-the-art tents. Malvin Lubega. Malvin Lubega is the executive chairman for the Baobab Group in South Africa. Companies he built and founded are on track to achieve combined annual revenues in excess of $200 million this year. And the winner of the All Africa Young Business Leader of the Year is Melvin Lubega. You know, as a young person, you often believe you can be ungovernable and innovate in every situation, but innovating an award ceremony wasn't on the table today, and so thank you for the organizers for acquiescing to the proposal. Um, first and foremost, um, it's truly humbling to be up here. I think when we began the Bebab Group in 2015, and it was me and Mohadi sitting around the table in the office, we didn't know we'd be on this platform having this impact. But I think what's so important about these awards is it brings together Africa. I think as our Honorable Deputy President mentioned, just the opportunity of Africa coming together 60 years on from the forming of the AAU, it's a $450 billion opportunity that we aren't taking advantage of. Yet within this room represented across the continent, we can actually do that. And so I think of the Bebab Group, um, what we do is we invest and build technology solutions for Africa's most pressing problems. And whilst we focus in logistics and services, our most proudest metric is that every 1.2 seconds, somewhere in the world, someone starts a course on one of our platforms. And to start from where we are today, to have clients across 60 countries is really humbling, but there's so much more we can do in Africa. And this recognition is really one which I'm humbled by, but more me and my teams are. The next award for the night was the Chief Financial Officer of the Year Award. This is the first year that Sassen Wealth has been part of it. Uh, we have looked around for events to sponsor to ultimately enhance our brand, and we landed at this event because we're very impressed with the type of caliber of individuals that are participating in this brand. We like to celebrate excellence. I think as a brand and as a country, we need to do it more. We're sponsoring the CFO of the Year Award. We chose this, this award because we believe the individual that wins this award is someone who has innovated, who has displayed excellence and ultimately taken their business to great heights. Um, we do believe from a, a South African perspective that we need businesses to grow, we need the economy to grow, and those individuals that are excelling in this area are ultimately the people that are going to help this happen. So we feel that being aligned with those individuals and sponsoring this particular category is the best suit for our brand. Chief Financial Officer of the Year. The recipient of the Chief Financial Officer of the Year Award has achieved positive financial results, sound management, proven corporate governance, increased shareholder value, and demonstrated innovations together with tangible qualities such as vision and integrity. The nominees for this award are Lawrence Kimathi, Group Chief Financial Officer of KCB Group PLC in Kenya. Kimathi's experience spans over 25 years and he has held several finance director CFO positions in multiple multinational organizations. He has been instrumental in driving key business and strategic growth ambitions for the group and is responsible for powering the business to post record growth in 2022. He is a proponent of sustainable finance. Dr. Mukhtar Adam. Chief Financial Officer of Zenith Bank PLC in Nigeria. Dr. Mukhtar holds a PhD and multiple other degrees and qualifications, specializing in economics, finance, and management. And the winner of the All Africa Chief Financial Officer of the Year is Mukhtar Adam. I thank the management of Zenith Bank, the head office, and the subsidiaries. I thank my team. I thank everybody, including our customers,
for making it possible. I thank you all. Thank you all. Thank you for the honor. Thank you. A new addition to the awards in 2023 was the Trade and Investment Facilitation Agency of the Year Award. We as the Houghton and Management Agency are a proud sponsor of the Trade and Investment Facilitation Agency Award. We are proud to sponsor this uh, award based on the fact that we believe that the future of Africa lies in us developing trade and investment throughout the continent to be able to introduce new infrastructure and grow the continent and its economy. I thank you. Trade and Investment Facilitation Agency of the Year. The Trade and Investment Facilitation Agency of the Year Award goes to the Rwandan Development Board. The RDB is a government institution mandated to accelerate Rwanda's economic development by enabling private sector growth and to transform Rwanda into a dynamic global hub for business, investment and innovation. Governed by the Board of Directors, made up by global entrepreneurs and experts and under supervision of the Office of the President, the RDB provides support throughout the entire investment journey to ensure that Rwanda remains one of the most competitive places to do business in Africa and the world. The Rwanda Development Board was established in 2008 out of a merger of eight government institutions, primarily to create a one-stop shop for business and investments. Since then, the RDB has been built with global expertise and modeled on international best practice. And the winner of the 2023 All Africa Trade and Investment Agency of the Year is Rwanda Development Board. It's an honor to receive this award on behalf of the Rwanda High Commission and Rwanda Development Board. I would like to thank the jury members for selecting Rwanda Development Board as the Trade and Investment Agency Facilitator of the Year and honoring us with this award. Rwanda has created and enabled investment environments. Rwanda Development Board provides support throughout the entire investment journey and to ensure that Rwanda remains the best competitive places to do business in Africa and the world. Now the next award celebrates a truly remarkable and innovative impact which has created and transformed markets. We as Choppies are proud to be the sponsor of the Business Innovator of the Year Award at the All Africa Business Leaders Awards. We are proud because we believe that innovation, creativity resonates with Choppies as this is substantiated by the countless number of CSR projects and business ventures that we have carried out throughout the years in Africa and Botswana as a country. To all nominees tonight, good luck. We wish you all the best. And to the winner, well done. Let not your creativity and your innovation stop tonight. Go on, go forward, and push your business. Innovator of the Year. The recipient of the Innovator of the Year Award has created remarkable impact in their sector by transforming a market, company, and product or service. In addition to this, they have pioneered their organizations in innovation. This year's nominees are Robert Paddock, CEO and co-founder of Valencia Institute. Paddock is also the co-founder of Get Smarter, an internationally acclaimed and implemented online education company which was later sold to NASDAQ listed 2U in 2017. Daniel Ndima. Daniel Ndima is the CEO of Cape Bio in South Africa. Ndima is a scientist who specializes in the structural biology of infectious diseases. He was awarded the Top Innovation and Technology Award by President Cyril Ramaphosa. Simon Davis, Chief Commercial Officer at Scarab Tech. 
Davis and the team at Scarab Tech are on a mission to transform the waste plastic problem into carbon neutral fuel. And the winner of the All Africa Innovator of the Year is Daniel Nadima. I thank my team. I do not think that I'm an innovator alone. I think we are a group of innovators, a very young team of scientists and different uh, you know, fields as well, engineers, machine learning specialists, etc. I would like to thank them. They are the reason why I'm standing here today. Thank you very much. The African Company of the Year was up next. African Company of the Year. The winner of the African Company of the Year award is considered to be an industry leader. The company exemplifies financial, strategic and product excellence while demonstrating business standards and ethics that possess qualities to which other businesses aspire. The nominees are Safaricom PLC located in Kenya. The organization is certified as a top employer in Kenya and Africa for 2023. Over 1.5 million Kenyans have benefited from their Lipa Dogo Dogo initiative for pay-as-you-use smartphones. Africson Bank, based in Egypt, a pan-African supranational multilateral financial institution created in 1993 under the auspices of the African Development Bank, holding a total of $31.1 billion in total assets for 2022. Airtel Africa PLC, with its head office in the United Arab Emirates. Airtel is a leading provider of telecommunications and mobile money services, with a presence in 14 countries in Africa, primarily in East, Central and West Africa. And the winner of the All Africa Company of the Year is Afriaxam Bank. As we receive and cherish this award, we are keenly aware that the road ahead will be more adverse than the one already trodden. But we embark on this journey strengthened by the recognition we receive today. This award will, by being on our table, remind us all, all the time, that we must strive to make the future brighter for our continent. So today, we dedicate that award to all those who have helped the bank to support the continent. The founders of the bank are shareholders who always stand by us, providing the equity that we need. Our funding partners, our business partners, who, without whom we will not be able to deliver on our mandate. I thank you for your kind attention. Ladies and gentlemen, the following award is presented to an individual who epitomizes the significance of giving back. The finalists in this category have given back in time, in talent, resources, and the link, and the like to assure the betterment of the quality of life for the citizens of the African continent. Philanthropist of the Year. The Philanthropist of the Year Award honors individuals that portray outstanding moral, financial and or resource support and investment in the community. A noteworthy form of leadership, this individual shows personal philanthropy through their generosity and determination in creating sustainable social change. The nominees are Senzanele Zondi, CEO and founder of SEZ Foundation, NPO from South Africa. Zondi is passionate about empowering SMMEs and serves as a business mentor for several SMME development and funding organizations. Isaac Mbata, CEO of Sky Tents from South Africa. Sky Tents has grown to become a leader in the manufacture, sale and supply of state-of-the-art tents. Mbata has developed a strong CSI program in collaboration with various charity organizations to combat poverty. Lumbim Lambo, founder and CEO of JB Dondolo in Zimbabwe. Inspired by her humanitarian father and his passion in helping his local community, Lambo carried her father's legacy with her and founded the non-profit organization JB Dondolo. 
And the winner of the All Africa Philanthropist of the Year is Lumbi Lambo. I'm sure all of you are surprised to see a guy walk up, uh, instead of a lady walking up for this. Unfortunately, my aunt wasn't able to come here, and um, she asked me to come on her behalf. Uh, my aunt has, has been very passionate about what my grandfather did, uh, what he used to do for us uh, back home. And um, she continued his legacy and opened it up to a lot more than just the community where, we, where she grew up. Um, she now heads up a lot of places in Zim and the US. And I think in her mind, these are the basic needs that people need that she is looking out for. I think the, the, if the more people that pull in and do this kind of work, I mean, not only her, the people that actually were also nominated for this award, I'd make a huge difference um, in everyone's community and, and especially in women's lives. Uh, just the basic needs that we all forget about. Thank you very much for the award. The next category was dedicated to the women who have set a formidable standard of what excellence looks like. As APSA Group, we pride ourselves in our commitment in supporting women, as well as driving diversity and inclusion. We have seen it fit to sponsor this category in line with our business strategy, where we continue to make progressive efforts in supporting women, evidenced by the recent launch of our SHE account in four of our markets, as well as appointing women into senior leadership roles. Here in Botswana, 60% of our executives are women. Mosadi Taria Sechaba, a woman, a bear of the nation. Thank you. Businesswoman of the Year. The winner of the Businesswoman of the Year Award shows characteristics of great leadership and community. She's unafraid of taking calculated risks that transform into sustainable success, female empowerment, and a leader that has earned great respect from peers, staff, and competitors. The nominees are Nyari Samushonga, CEO of We Think Code. Samushonga is a tech executive and entrepreneur who heads up this South African Software Development Academy. She is passionate about developing cutting-edge technology which will contribute to the continent's progress in innovation and technology. Wandia Gichuru is the founder and CEO of Vivo Fashion Group. Gichuru co-founded both Vivo and Shop Zetu, a retailing clothing business and multi-brand e-commerce marketplace dedicated to fashion, beauty and accessory brands in 2011 and 2020 respectively. Vivo is Kenya's fastest growing, locally designed and locally manufactured fashion business. Dr. Owen D. Omo Giafo, President and Group CEO of Transnational Corporation PLC, Nigeria's leading listed diversified conglomerate with investments in power, hospitality and energy. Dr. Omo Giafo is the first female to hold this position. And the 2023 All Africa Business Woman of the Year is Oven Omogiafo, the President and Group CEO of the Transformational Corporation. <laughs> Unfortunately, Oven Omogiafo is not present tonight, and we're going to be accepting this award on her behalf. The next award celebrates individuals who have made efforts in working with governments and federal bodies to develop industries on the continent. This category is very important to the IDC. It is completely aligned with what we were established for 80 years ago. We are very much interested and at the heart of developing black industrialists, individuals and leaders that can transform the ownership of this uh, economy, as well as ensure that jobs are created. We have a very high unemployment at the moment, and it is only through industrialists that the IDC can use the money that we have to go out and have a real transformation in the economy and create the jobs and the transformation of the African continent that is so needed in the 21st century. Congratulations to all the nominees. What you have attained so far, you have to be very proud of. And to the winner of this category, 
Thank you very much. Thank you for your work. Continue to do what you are doing and congratulations. The Industrialist of the Year. The Industrialist of the Year Award recognizes individuals who have made efforts in working with government or federal bodies for the development of any specific industry on the continent of Africa. This year's nominees are Winfrida Ngumi, Managing Director at Space and Style Limited in Kenya. Ngumi has 30 years experience in the building and construction sector and the manufacturing industry. Space and Style Limited is a market leader in the manufacture and distribution of building product solutions. Mohamed Duji, President of METL Group in Tanzania, a businessman, entrepreneur, philanthropist and former politician. Duji heads the Tanzanian conglomerate and is single-handedly responsible for increasing METL's revenue from $30 million to over $2 billion between 1999 and 2022. And Africa's industrialist of the year is Mohamed Tuji. I would like to dedicate this award to the 38,000 people in our company. Without them, I would not be standing here today. Ladies and gentlemen, now when reading through the, uh, the criteria for this category, it explained the formidability of an African leader. The award recipients in previous years have displayed exceptional standards of excellence and the finalists this evening exhibit amazing qualities of resilience when taking calculated risks that materialize into sustainable success. We are the sponsor of the Business Leader of the Year Award. We are very proud to actually be the sponsor of this category as this category celebrates excellence in the field of speciality. We want to celebrate the winner, but not just that. We also believe by celebrating uh, excellence, we actually help others to want to do better. And that is what we at Axis Bank wants to see, all of us to do better. Business Leader of the Year. The winner of the Business Leader of the Year category exemplifies outstanding leadership in business. He or she has achieved positive financial results, increased shareholder value, sound management, proven corporate governance, and demonstrated innovation. Besides their career accomplishments, this individual holds intangible qualities such as integrity and vision. The nominees are Stephen Saad, Group Chief Executive of Aspen Group in South Africa. The group has established global presence in more than 50 countries. Saad has driven Aspen's social economic development initiatives that focus on supporting programs targeting the delivery of primary health care in rural areas. Professor Benedict Orama, President and Chairman of the Board of Directors of Afriksim Bank in Egypt. In support of the AFCTA, Afriksim Bank, under the leadership of Professor Orama, championed the creation of innovative digital platforms to boost intra-regional trade and investments revolutionize cross-border payments, and improve access to quality trade information. And Loveland Bassi, Group Chief Operating Officer and CEO in the SADC region for HealthGuard International Nigeria. Bassi is responsible for the operations, growth and expansion of HealthGuard Group throughout Africa and beyond. She's the youngest black woman to lead a multinational direct selling company in Africa. And the winner of the All Africa Business Leader of the Year is Professor Benedict Orama. I'm really very, very fortunate and proud to be leading a team of talented, committed Africans who put Africa first. We are working hard every day to make sure Africa takes its destiny in its own hands. Who work with courage to deal with those things that for 60 years have put us behind as a people. So tonight, on their behalf, I receive this award. Not necessarily to celebrate 
that we've reached any pinnacle. But as a reminder of the hard work we must do so that in the years to come, one day, collectively, we will celebrate the emergence of Africa from the trials and troubles of today. So Rakesh, I thank you for all the work you are doing with your team, promoting the continent through media, pr promoting education, all, and all the other things you do, including this award ceremony. Deputy President, thank you very much for being here. I also thank my colleagues and everybody who is here. Thank you very much. The African of the Year Award recognizes individuals who have made a significant contribution towards positive change in their communities as well as the continent as a whole. And the African of the Year is Dr. John Kengasong. African of the Year. With many firsts, awards and recognitions to his name, he has shaped healthcare in Africa, expanding his influence globally as a modern day hero. The African of the Year is Dr. John Nkegasong. Dr. John Nkegasong is the first person of African origin to hold the position of US Global AIDS Coordinator and Special Representative for Global Health Diplomacy. The first director of the African Centers of Disease Control and Prevention in Addis Ababa the first ever laureate of the Vercal Prize for Global Health in 2022. A leading virologist with over 30 years of experience in public health, Dr. Nkega Song has served as a special envoy to the World Health Organization and led the COVID-19 response in Africa, securing 400 million vaccine doses for the continent at the height of vaccine scarcity. He holds a doctorate and two master's degrees and has authored over 250 peer-reviewed papers and book chapters, and is the recipient of numerous prestigious awards and recognitions for his outstanding contributions and leadership. This award, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, is dedicated to a couple of individuals. President Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of the afri Exim Bank, Professor Rama, Strive Masiwa, Vera Songwe, and my beautiful wife here. Thank you for your support for over the years. <laughs> the award is also dedicated to the talented staff of the Africa Centers for Disease Control that I was privileged and honored to be the founding director. We have talents on the continent that can guarantee our collective security. Let me just end my remarks, Excellency, by saying that I recognize that we are, I'm standing here in front of the business community. But I want to leave you with one message, that a disease threat, as we learned during the COVID-19 pandemic, is a health issue, is an economic issue, it is a security issue. The COVID-19, before WHO declared it over as a public health emergency, had killed 20 million human beings. 20 million, million human beings in three years. Has disrupted the economies in a way that we couldn't imagine in 2018 or 19 before the, the pandemic. $15 trillion evapor evaporated. So as I take my seat, ladies and gentlemen, I call on you as you conduct businesses to always think of disease threat, that at least we learn a lesson and not just documented a lesson from the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you once more for the honor. The ultimate category for the evening was the Lifetime Achievement Award. The award pays tribute to those who have made a remarkable impact on their industry, country and continent over the period of a lifetime. The Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Dr. James Mwangi. 
Lifetime Achievement Award. The Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Dr. James Mwangi, Group Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer of Equity Group Holdings, PLC, for his positive impact on Kenyan society. Dr. Mwangi has received many honors. Among them are the title of CBS, a Kenyan National Presidential Award as First Class Chief of the Order of the Burning Spear, five honorary doctorate degrees, the Forbes Africa Person of the Year in 2012, the 2020 Oslo Business of Peace Award, also described as the Nobel Prize for Business. He has served in board and advisory roles at the Global Advisory Council for Visa Incorporated, the Clinton Global Initiative, the G8 New Alliance for Food Security and Nutrition, US President Barack Obama's Initiative for Global Development, the G20 Advisory Board for Agriculture and Initiative for Global Development and the Global Agenda Council on New Economic Thinking of the World Economic Forum from 2003 to 2007. He also served as a founding chair of Kenya's Vision 2030 from inception in 2007 to 2019. This award, ladies and gentlemen, has its roots to the influence of how I was brought up by my widowed mother, her grace, Waidi Momwangi. In crucial, not to be left out, social belonging, sharing to ensure each of my siblings got a fair and equitable portion of what we had shared led to the concept of equity group. Equity is about inclusion, ensuring nobody is left behind. Equity is about shared prosperity of all stakeholders. Equity is about honor and dignity. And for those who know equity very well, our purpose is to change lives give dignity and expand opportunities for wealth creation on the African continent. Together, we can transform Africa. Together, I hope, in the 40 years that I see ahead of me, I will have the opportunity to win another award because we shall have together transformed the African continent. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, help me warmly welcome Roberta, the Managing Director of the ABN Group. Thank you very much, Fifi. Distinguished guests and esteemed colleagues, all protocol observed. What a phenomenal evening it has been for the ABN Group and for the leading voices in business that we get to celebrate through both our platforms, CNBC Africa and Forbes Africa. And I know we are all in a celebratory mood. We want to celebrate the winners tonight. So I'm going to keep it brief and not get in the way of those celebrations. I am sure that we can all agree that the energy that filled this ballroom was unbelievable. But more so, just being able to enjoy the acknowledgement of others in one room, considering the trials that we have faced over the past few years is a true testimony of our continent's resilience and our perseverance. This evening, we have witnessed the recognition of exceptional leaders, not just the winners, but the finalists and the nominees, as well as those who have demonstrated outstanding qualities and have made significant contributions to their organizations and their communities. Leadership is not just about holding a position of authority, but about but also about inspiring, uplifting, and empowering others to achieve their goals. The individuals that we have celebrated this evening have shown exceptional leadership skills from their ability to motivate their teams to the unwavering commitment to strive for excellence. And as we conclude this ceremony, let us take a moment to reflect the importance of leadership in our lives and in our society, especially the crucial role it plays in, in nurturing the future leaders of our continent and the world, that is our youth. 
And in, ad and in addition, the world that, we'd fa that the world was facing a barrage of problems with the help, but with the help of the platforms of the ABLA, we have celebrated female leaders who, have, who are breaking glass ceilings and who have rightfully earned their place at the table. So to all the award nominees and recipients, my hearty congratulations on your well-deserved recognition, your inspiration to us all. And on that note, on behalf of the ABN Group, Thank you to everyone who have arrived from far corners of the world and the continent to attend this year's awards evening. Let us continue to strive for excellence in our leadership roles and work towards a brighter future for all. Ladies and gentlemen, please, uh, I think we can give them a standing ovation. These are our winners of the 2023 All Africa Business Leader Awards.